Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's EVM and this is about our heat pump and how much it's cost us to run over the winter. Whether you're against or for heat pumps, it's been the most common question. For those that like them or are thinking about getting one, it's more of a case of how much is it going to cost you over winter? Then I can use that as a guide for myself. And for the people that hate heat pumps because of unknown reasons, well, they're basically saying, I can't wait until winter because you'll either freeze to death, because it clearly can't heat the house up in winter, or it's going to cost you an absolute fortune. So who's correct? Is it going to cost us a fortune, about the same, or are we actually going to save money compared to the gas central heating boiler we had before? Now we're into March, of course, and the weather's got, well, worse. <laughs> the heat pump's still heating the house up. If you want to know how comfortable it's been over winter, I've done a video about that in the channel already. This is about costs, and for that, I need to do it somewhere a little bit warmer and a bit more whiteboardish. Oh, and just to answer another question whilst I'm out here, this does not have a heating element, a three bar fire equivalent inside it to stop it freezing in cold weather. So no, it doesn't cost a fortune, it doesn't have kilowatts of energy being used to defrost itself every hour, as some of the old models did. Like smartphones, these are getting better, more efficient. So let's not judge on what you've had before, or maybe what your neighbour had five, ten years ago, on what is available today. So that's the first thing. Everyone's different, every house is different, they don't suit every house. And quite frankly, they're very expensive, and they don't suit a lot of people in terms of justifying themselves compared to getting a gas boiler out of the house and this into one. It suited us, I'll tell you why in a bit, but I am not saying everybody go out and get a heat pump. This is just how much it's cost us. It's been too long since we last saw the whiteboard of truth. Here it is with this really badly drawn graph, but it does show just briefly the breakdown of what we have done during the winter months. So we've got December, January, February, and the three bars are the heating. So we've used 583 kilowatt hours worth of electricity to heat our house in December, 104 kilowatt hours uh, to do the hot water, because we've got a hot water cylinder. And in total, so the red bar's the important one, 687 kilowatt hours in December, 584 in January, 400 and 23 in February. Now it should be pointed out that December was very, very cold in the UK, or at least for the UK. Minus 10, minus 15, I saw it uh, for a, a few times up here in North Yorkshire. And for a good two or three weeks, we had, as I said, for, for us, really cold winter. So it had a very, very good test. I would say this is probably worst case scenario for a typical British winter rather than an average. You can see the hot water usage is pretty much the same each month. That is done at night just once unless we need to boost it for whatever reason like if we've got people over and we need to top it up. Uh, that, that's just done at night when it's cheap on the off-peak period. So we've got 104, 107 probably because we did have people over for quite a few days and then just 90 in February partly because well there's just a few days less in February. But ultimately that's the total, the kilowatt hours, the breakdown. Let me now go to the actual cost. Right, let me explain what you're looking at here. This is the price that we would have paid had we still had our gas central heating boiler for the winter that we've just done. This is obviously estimated, it's quite difficult to do. I've looked at last year's winter for gas usage when we had the central heating boiler and the years before that and averaged it out essentially. And that gets me to 6,591 kilowatt hours worth of gas usage over the three months of winter. The electricity consumption, as you saw on the previous whiteboard, was 1,694 kilowatt hours. That is the total consumption of the heat pump. And I have checked it on my uh, home battery system. I don't have it with me at the moment. Uh, and it's pretty much bob on in terms of how much it actually consumed. And before anybody says this, because again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, we don't have a massive immersion heater outside defrosting the heat pump. It does it itself using, uh, give me a second. The four-way valve reverses the refrigerant route around the heat pump like it would if cooling. The compressor doesn't run. 
We've also disabled from day one the immersion heater in the hot water cylinder. Never used it, never intend on using it because I want the heat pump with its efficiency to heat all of my hot water up, not uh, an immersion heater, which at best would run at 100%. So no immersion heater, no similar equivalent three bar fire or whatever outside. This is the total consumption of the heat pump. Now you may notice three different prices here for the heat pump. This one, the top one is if we were on the price cap, this is how much it would have cost us because a lot of people are on the price cap. So I'm just putting there as a comparison and that's the price cap as it stood during this winter because of course it's going up again at the end of this month. This price here, this is us now, not the US. That's how much we actually paid this winter. So pretty straightforward. We have a home battery, but not a huge one. It's eight kilowatt hours. Solar is not included in this calculation because it didn't generate enough to cover the, the house, let alone the heat pump. And of course we're on Octopus Go, which is a slightly different tariff. We've got a cheaper four hours by a big margin, but then more expensive for the other 20 hours. So be interesting to see what that does. And then this, the us soon bit, I should really explain that. That's what we will have by next winter. So my plan is to change my battery system, obviously put a bigger one in, and that will effectively cost us a lot less. So I've done the calculations as if we had that this year, if that makes sense. I will then, after I put the prices in, tell you what efficiency the system is telling me it's got for the hot water and the heat pump from day one. So that's from September, middle of September, to the end of February. So let's start with gas. The price cap of that, of course, is 10.3 pence. I have all the figures here in my book of truth. Uh, gas cost us 6,591 kilowatt hours, which works out at 10.3 pence at 679 pounds. Can you guess I got a new black pen for that bit? Now the heat pump, if you're on the price cap, then that would have cost 575 pounds of electricity to run the heat pump. Everything, hot water, heating, all of it, no immersion heater, any of that to, to calculate in, because as I said earlier, it's off, we don't use it. Uh, now, how much did we pay on Octopus Go with our eight kilowatt hour battery, not including solar, as I said earlier? That's not as big a difference as you'd think. 543 pounds. That's predominantly because we had such a cold December especially, but we were paying 40 pence for 20 hours and just 12 pence, at least at the current go rates anyway, 12 pence for just four hours. So all the hot water is done during that four hour period, four hours of heating of course, but because that 40 pence is more expensive than the price cap, that's why it's not massively cheaper. And with only an eight kilowatt hour battery, it only powered uh, during the coldest days and it only powered the heat pump during the peak rates for, well, un until midday on the worst case scenario. I'll show you how much we used on the worst days specifically uh, later on in the video. Now, what if, or rather when we get the bigger battery version that we're getting, what would the cost be then? This is of course estimated, it will be a much bigger battery and that would be, 353 pounds. So that essentially means that if I'd have had that in place, it would have cost us considerably less than the price cap and the uh, setup I've got now, but also massively less than the gas central heating system we had before. And of course we use 1,694 kilowatt hours in total, which, well, you can see how much less we've used. That's for two reasons. One, heat pumps are far more efficient. And two, the gas central heating boiler we had, although we had the Tado thermostats, the radiate thermostats, so I've done as much as possible. You could argue that the gas central heating boiler wasn't as tweaked or as optimized as the heat pump. So I wanna be clear on that one. Um, but you can see here the clear difference. Many, many people thought that it would cost us a lot more during winter rather than actually quite a bit less. Even on the price cap, you're saving just over a hundred pounds. And this isn't factoring in the rest of the year. This is just for three months, remember. The three worst months, typically. But 
that will only continue as the weather gets milder the heat pump efficiency grows and the difference between that and that should also grow so yeah uh, in terms of fuel we are saving now once we get rid of our gas hob which we still yet to do we can then get rid of gas entirely from the house which means that's another hundred ish pounds a year standing charge we, we won't have to pay so it, it does it does accumulate to a decent saving now that doesn't necessarily mean that the predicted five to 600, 650 pounds saving that we, that I've done for us per year is gonna justify the installation cost of a heat pump. It does justify it for us, but only because of the bigger battery system, the solar panels. It's like, it's like a jigsaw. The more pieces you have, the more sense it makes. Once you've got solar panels, once you've got home battery, once you've got that time of day tariff, then a heat pump will be considerably cheaper it might be about the same or slightly cheaper on the price gap with a proper installed heat pump with heat calculations that are done for your house. I can't say that enough. Um, but again, most people say, well, all right, even if I say 200 pounds a year, that's good, but I'm probably paying four, five, 6,000 pounds more for a heat pump than I would for a, an equivalent gas boiler swap out. We only had to replace a few radiators as the previous video will tell you in terms of Went for double panel instead of single panel. No pipe work was changed. The, ins the insulation in the house is identical now with the heat pump and as it was for the previous few years on the, with the gas central heating boiler. So we haven't uber insulated the house. You don't need to, it just helps. Regardless of what you're heating your house with, it helps. Now the efficiency of the heat pump. You'll have two ratings for this. One is the efficiency of the heating system that's set to a floor temperature of 40 degrees. And the other one is uh, an efficiency rating for the hot water. Cause that's set at a temperature of, I think 51 degrees uh, centigrade, of course. Uh, so that's why you've got two different efficiency figures. So this is the, remember the total efficiency since the middle of September to the end of February. So again, worst case scenario, and we have an efficiency of 3.8. Or, as I prefer to do it, come on, 380% efficiency. So that's for the heat pump before winter, just for a couple of months, and then winter itself. So again, that should be the minimum we get. We should get a lot higher than that. But that's for the heating, remember. The hot water, if I just skim across a second, that's lower. That is 280% or a cop of 2.8. Yeah, heat pumps are genuinely that efficient. If 380% is the worst case scenario I get in this house through winter, then I'm happy with that because as we found out in September, just for a few weeks, we got nearly 500% for the heating anyway. Again, as I've said in previous videos, a heat pump can run at the same temperatures pretty much as a gas boiler. So it's not a case of can it work in my house, it's a case of how much it will cost to install and ultimately to run. Uh, but if you get, again, I can't stress this enough, if you get the heat calculations done for your house properly and it's installed properly, then you will hopefully end up with efficiencies such as this. Uh, I won't be diverting the solar for those that are asking about that into the immersion here because that for me with what I have is inefficient. I don't want to divert, let's say, three kilo hours worth of energy into my immersion heater at 100% efficiency at best. I want to use that three kilo hours to power the heat pump running at three or 400 or even 500% efficiency. Even though the solar panels won't power the heat pump completely or might not, the battery can fill in the gaps as it were. So I can, I can use all of that solar via the heat pump to get far more efficient use out of what is on my roof. So no, I won't be getting an eddy or anything like that. I did say I would show you how much we used on the worst day in terms of uh, the electricity consumption. So this is on one of those, I think it was minus 13 to 15 during the night and about minus 11, 12 during the day. So again, for the UK, very, very cold. So you can see here, the month of December, the worst day for heating uh, was 32 kilowatt hours worth of electricity. Again, that was really, the college staff seen it for years. So this should be worst case scenario, 32 kilowatt hours. Um, and then I think we added maybe 
two to three kilowatt hours, probably let's say three kilowatt hours for uh, hot water. I have done a few videos on this house, on this heat pump. Again, I'll put the playlist link in the description below. So if you want to know what we did in more detail and the cost of the installation of this, go and jump on that video. Yes, I'm gonna make you watch that one so I'll get two views instead of one. If there's anything I've missed, then please ask in the comment section. Does this help you out at all? Did you hate heat pumps before? For whatever reason and now you're thinking well i guess it's not too bad as this changes your perception remember as i said at the beginning heat pumps are getting more efficient there's no point in going off what you what you've seen in the daily mail or what what someone that you know whose brothers friends flatmates cousins uncles got one and this is what he said i'm done thanks for watching please become a member um subscribe like all that sort of stuff members get videos like this on Sunday instead of Friday. There's a members only video at the end of every month just for you. So right, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.